In the words of a popular 70s song, War. Huh? Good God, y'all. What is it good for? War of the Realms is hot in April, and there's a lot of other stuff going on in Marvel that we need to check out. What's up, everybody? I'm Stan, and welcome to Detail Comics, where we go over comics in detail. This is a weekly one-shot, where we're going to go over a bunch of different stuff for specific topics around comic books. And this week, I'm going to be talking about five, that's five things that you need to check out in April regarding Marvel solicitation. So the first one is Avengers No Road Home. So after the events of Avengers No Surrender, which was a huge boon for Marvel, it showed the reintroduction of the Hulk, as well as a lot of different stuff regarding different aspects of the cosmic universe, it was a team-up between Al Ewing, Mark Wade, and Jim Zub to create this really kind of cool weekly storyline. And overall, it delivered. The real question is, can they capture the magic of that particular storyline? Because this was going to be the last current Avengers book before Jason Aaron took over and created his own team. And with that team still in effect, is this going to be kind of a retrospective historic take on this former Avengers team? Or is it going to be something completely different? Are we going to push this bad boy outside the continuity a little bit to make it a little bit easier to digest? I don't necessarily know, but it's one that you should keep your eyes on, especially since it's coming to its conclusion inside April. Then we have another extension of the Venomverse, which is going to be Web of Venom, Cult of Carnage, which is going to be written by Frank Thierry. And with the ever-popular series of Venom, written by Donny Cates, it is going to kind of revitalize, but we've also seen other things like Web of Carnage or Web of Venom, Carnage Reborn, as well as other different Venom titles. And this is going to be a replacement as Venom is getting his kicks inside another event, which we'll be talking about a little bit later in the video. But Web of Venom, Cult of Carnage is kind of bringing bringing Venom back up to that almost Spider-Man level of popularity when he gets multiple titles that are tied into various things. You know, like Spectacular Spider-Venom would be a little bit of a different story, but when you go Web of Venom and then you can tie in a character with such a cult following like Carnage, it makes for a really interesting perspective on the character. And I can't wait to see how they tie in everything and move everything forward so that that way hopefully we can have, like, Maximum Carnage was easily one of my most favorite storylines as a kid, even though it was kind of garbage. But I really dug it and I continue to revisit it because it just brings back so many good memories. If they can create another storyline kind of like that, I am all in. But when we're talking about storylines from the past, how can we miss Marvel Team-Up? Marvel Team-Up ran until the mid-1980s and it went over 150 issues with the main tie-in character being Spider-Man. So the reintroduction of Marvel Team-Up in April with an issue number one starring Spider-Man and Miss Marvel Kamala Khan is going to be a throwback to that time and possibly a reintroduction written by Eve Ewing. The question is, is Spider-Man going to be the main person on the title, or is Miss Marvel going to be the main person on the title? Spider-Man has the legacy, and he's headlined almost like 140 of the 150 issues of Marvel team-up featuring Spider-Man. The other ones were like the Hulk and the Human Torch. But Miss Marvel, she kind of would segue into a next generation, and her character ties really well into individual tie-ups. So she might not necessarily have the pulling power that Peter Parker does, but she could be a great introduction to a bunch of different readers that are more familiar with the New Age of Comics versus the kind of legacy that's going along with Spider-Man. Hitting on number four, we have Rob Liefeld returning to Marvel Comics, creating a character so similar to other characters he's already created in Major X. So Major X number one gets a number one and a number two inside April. And if you take a look at this, you know, the design of it, it looks kind of like Cyclops mixed with Deadpool and a little bit of cable in there. So it doesn't super feel original, but it does come from an outside alternate parallel universe called Existence, where Major X is the last remaining mutant in that timeline, and all kinds of hell is going to break loose because, well... Marvel X-Men. That's what happens. So, Major X is something that some people were going to be really amped for, especially if they're really big fans of Rob Liefeld and his work, as well as the characters he's created. But some readers are going to tread carefully, given how they, well, remember how Rob Liefeld wrote and drew characters. So, it's going to be kind of a mixed bag, but definitely something you should keep an eye on. And with number five, the biggest and most important thing coming from Marvel Comics in April is the beginning of the War of the Realms. War of the Realms number one is coming out. There's going to be War of the Realms number two, which is going to be continuing on, and no less than like seven different tie-in books. I've actually got a list here, so let me see if I can, uh, you know, get you a little bit more insight. We have... Uh, issue number one of War of the Realms. Avengers number 18 is going to tie in as Guardians of the Galaxy gets a tie in as well. Journey into Mystery actually is coming back as a limited miniseries specifically for War of the Realms. Thor number 12, of course, written by Jason Aaron. Uncanny X-Men gets a three-part tie in written by Matthew Rosenberg, but it does not derail the main series, which is a good thing. We also have War Scrolls, which is a new miniseries that's going to be included for War of the Realms. The Punisher gets a three-part series, as well as Venom and Squirrel Girl 
Supergirl gets a tie-in. So War of the Realms is going to be a really huge part of April, May, June. Going into the summertime, it's going to be gigantic. So if you're a fan of Marvel, get ready for a lot of tie-ins, especially if you really want to know everything that goes on in the War of the Realms. I don't necessarily know if I can keep up with that. I think Thor, Avengers, and the War of the Realms major book are going to be enough to kind of hold me over. And I might dabble into the Punisher book. I might dabble into the X-Men book. I don't necessarily know. I'm going to have to touch my toe in the water, see how everything feels before I go jumping right in. But I want to know what you guys are excited for in April. What do you think about the lineup that's coming out and how Marvel is going to be handling this gigantic event, even though they said like a year ago that they weren't going to be doing any more gigantic events. But as always, if you like what you see, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to get more news, reviews, and commentary on comic books, comic book movies, comic book TV shows and games, and anything and everything inside the world of comics.